Story number one. How Dame Margaret Rutherford and Sir Patrick Stewart met the ghost of John Baldwin Buckstone at the Royal Haymarket Theatre. The Royal Haymarket Theatre in London was opened on the 4th of July in 1821. From 1853 to 1877, this theatre was managed by actor, playwright, and comedian John Baldwin Buckstone. Under his leadership, the Royal Haymarket became the premier comedy theatre of the period. Two years after his retirement, John Buckstone died in his London home at the age of 77 following a long illness. It was shortly thereafter that people began seeing the ghost of Mr. Buckstone at the theatre. In one instance, an actor passed what he thought was a colleague who was wearing period costume. When he said hello and received no reply, he turned, only to see the other person fading away. In 1963, Dame Margaret Rutherford who became famous for having played Agatha Christie's, Miss Marple, was performing at the Royal Haymarket. Since the night was filled with an especially dense layer of fog, she decided it would be safer for her to stay overnight in her dressing room instead of trying to get home. While settling in for the night, she was startled when the ghost of John Buckstone appeared in her dressing room. The ghost had stuck his head out of a cabinet. After showing her his naked hairy leg, he grinned and disappeared. In 2009, Sir Patrick Stewart appeared at the Royal Haymarket for the production of Waiting for Godot. Say, I am happy. I am happy. <laughs> so am I. So am I. We are happy. We are happy. What do we do now, now that we're happy? <laughs> During a dress rehearsal with Sir Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart fumbled one of his lines. When his colleague asked him what had happened, Patrick told him that he had seen the ghost of a man standing just off stage. The man had been wearing a beige coat and twill pants. Stagehands later helped Mr. Stewart identify the ghost as John Buckstone. This incident was reported in a London newspaper, The Telegraph. When a reporter interviewed Nigel Everett, the theater director, as to what had happened, Mr. Everett said, Patrick told us all about it. He was stunned. I would not say frightened, but I would say impressed. Story number two. Laura Prepon and the ghost in the bedroom. A few years ago, Laura and her husband, Ben Foster, went house hunting. One house really stood out to them and they wound up purchasing an old home. Although they loved this home, they both felt as though something was off about the master bedroom. For one thing, this room was absolutely cold. Laura once observed that she thought it was 50 degrees more cold than anywhere else in the house. The room also gave off a bad vibe. After talking it over, the couple decided that the room needed a makeover. They hired a painter to paint the room a bright color that would help with livening it up. The couple moved into a guest bedroom while the painter began his work in the master bedroom. One night the sound of a terrible crash woke the couple up. When they switched on the lights, they found their dog cowering beside the bed. Thinking they had a home intruder, Ben grabbed his handgun and began searching the house. The light to the master bedroom and the attached sunroom were on. The doors to the sunroom were also open even though the doors had been shut, locked, and bolted. After a careful search, the couple found that there was nobody else in the house. A few days later, a friend was hanging out with Laura in her kitchen when someone knocked on the door. Hello, is anyone home? Called a voice. When the friend answered the door, there was nobody there. At that moment, they heard the sound of music coming from upstairs. The two women went upstairs to find that a radio the painter had left in the master bedroom had been switched on. Laura turned the radio off. As she wondered whether the radio had a faulty switch, the painter returned to finish his work in the bedroom. When Lori and her friend told the workman about the radio, the painter sighed. The painter went on to say that this house was being haunted by an old woman who had once lived in this house. He also said that she had died in this very room. Although Laura had not liked hearing what the painter had to say, the painter's timing was perfect. She had a housewarming party scheduled for the next day and since the bedroom had been painted, 
she could now put all of the furnishings in place. By the following day, Laura and Ben were ready for their guests. The food had been prepared. There was plenty of wine. The house was immaculate. When the guests arrived, everyone toasted the happiness of the new homeowners. Since they were interested to see the rest of the house, some of the guests went upstairs. All of the sudden there was a loud scream. The guests who had gone upstairs came rushing downstairs to report that they had just seen the ghost of an old woman in the master bedroom. When one of these women pulled out a phone, Lori asked what she was doing. I'm calling my mother. She has certain abilities that might be able to help. After speaking to her mother, her friend told Laura that she had said that they had to go back upstairs. Although Laura didn't want to go upstairs she did. At the open door to the bedroom, the friend's mother asked if there was another smaller room attached to the bedroom. When Laura said yes, the woman told her that the ghost was in this room. She directed everyone to go back downstairs and to wait for 30 minutes before going back to the bedroom. The guests nibbled on appetizers and nervously chatted for the next 30 minutes. After 30 minutes they carefully crept up the stairs. Laura and Ben were greatly relieved to find that the terrible feeling that they had always felt when entering this bedroom was gone. When asked what had happened, the friend's mother said that she had asked the spirit to please go away. This woman as it turned out, was a powerful medium. Although she lived in a different state and had never visited Laura's house, she had somehow been able to reach into the spirit world to help. To this day, the ghost has not returned. This is the story of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the ghost who saved him. In 2004, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was in a car crash during an event at the Sonoma Raceway in California. Here is a clip of the action that was reported by Speed, a BBC TV show that talks about fast vehicles. The wall. Earnhardt apparently lost traction and spun hard into the concrete with the back of the car first as it came to a stop on track. It burst into flames. Apparently, the fuel cell or the connectors to that cell were compromised. You see a large amount of fuel on the ground. From on board the car, here's the impact. You'll also see a shot from inside the car as Earnhardt was apparently dazed in the impact. And although it's rather frightening to look at, you'll see that he immediately started to get himself out of the car as the flagging crews brought the session to a halt and got out the fire extinguishers. Now keep in mind, this is not a full-bodied car like the next Hell Cup car he's used to driving in NASCAR. These factory Corvettes use a lot of exotic materials, including carbon fiber, Kevlar, fiberglass, and so forth. There is Earnhardt being attended to by the fire crews at the back of the truck. He appeared to be dazed, and it was decided to put him on a stretcher and airlift him to the University Hospital at the University of California at Davis. Although you can clearly see Dale getting out of the vehicle as it caught on fire, Dale insists that someone rescued him. He said he was badly dazed after HTE accident and that he couldn't move. He also says that he felt someone put their arms under him to lift and pull him out of the car. Dale was kept overnight in the hospital for observation since he had suffered second and third degree burns. When he asked his pit crew who he needed to thank for having saved him from the fire, he was surprised when he was told that he had saved himself. For the rest of his life, Dale insisted that someone had saved him because he remembers being lifted out of his seat and pulled to safety. So what do you think? Was Dale so dazed by the car accident that he only imagined being pulled to safety? What about the story of Laura, Ben, and their haunted bedroom? If their room was haunted, how is it possible that someone who had never been to their home and who didn't even live in the same state was able to help them? What about the experience of Sir Patrick Stewart and Dame Margaret Rutherford? Did they really see the ghost of John Baldwin Buckstone? Please share your thoughts or opinions in the comments below. If you like this video and would like to see more content, please click on the like and subscribe buttons.